thank you so much for joining me today here for do not ignore docker ignore thank you so much for the organizers for having me i hope you're having a fabulous time so far here at DockerCon 2021 and let's get started my name is Anais Orlis. I'm a site reliability engineer at Sivo. Sivo is a cloud computing company that's based on Kubernetes, specifically on a distribution called K3S. Now, before that, I was working at Codefresh, which is a DevOps automation platform. So for the past months, I had quite a lot of experience working with Docker, Docker images, optimizing container image builds, and basically making them production ready with Kubernetes. Now, if you want to connect, Stay in touch, have questions, suggestions, anything. Here's my Twitter handle at Orlisanais, where I'm probably most active on. So if you have any tweets, any feedback, thoughts, just tweet them at me, happy to chat. Now, what can you actually expect of this talk? What do I want to share with you today? Well, first I want to quickly recap what goes into the process of us creating a Docker file. To that Docker file, ending up as a container image running in our production environment. What is the process here? How do we get from one to the other, right? Then from there, I'm going to take a look at Dockerfile in build context. What is the build context? We will take a look at that. So don't worry if you do not know what it means. And then we're going to basically take a look at a repository structure and an example application based on which I want to explain the purpose of Docker Ignore. Why are we using Docker GNU in the first place? What is it? How do we use it? When do we use it? And in the end, I'm going to leave you with 10 practical tips to optimize your container image builds. So what is the process here and what is the end goal? Usually we start with a Docker file. Now this Docker file is probably based on different sources online, hopefully trusted sources, right? So we know exactly what we're doing, what goes into our Docker file. So we optimize our Docker file depending on the resources that we use, depending on what we find, the information we gather. Okay, we have our Docker file for our application. We can build a Docker file into a container image and then we can run it locally. We can test it out. Awesome, everything works. Now, we want to run this container image or application as a container image in our different testing and production environment. So we're gonna push it to a remote registry that could be Docker Hub, for instance. We push it there so we can access it from our various environments. Awesome. So this process is basically step by step, right? In the end, we're going to end up with something that's not dependent on our local environment, that's going to live somewhere remote. Awesome. Now, what is the goal here? What are the goals for this entire process? First of all, we want to create a Docker file and process that's really easy to understand and to maintain, right? Whenever somebody new joins my team, I don't want to spend hours and hours explaining different files and how they are built and what goes into it, right? I want to make my codes as well as tools that I'm using and my Docker file self-explanatory. So the can others easy, you can pick it up and build upon it, which is amazing. Now, then I want to also reduce the number of layers that go into my container image, that go into what is actually being put together, right? I want to reduce the number of layers because ultimately I want to make it as simple as possible. It shouldn't be complex. It should just work. And making things just work is usually the most difficult part. <laughs> so in the end, we just want to focus really on those things that are crucial to optimizing our process. And we have to identify those things, obviously, right? When you're new to a new tool, you don't necessarily know what is necessary. Like, what do you have to focus on to make it perfect? But in the end, we really just want to focus on those aspects that are really, really needed to make things work. And in the end, one of our main goals is really to keep our image size small. Our container image should be as small as possible. And you will have lots of talks today that are actually focus exactly on this problem because this is one of the hardest things. One of the hardest things is keeping our image size small and compact. However, it comes with lots of different benefits. If we are able to keep our image size small, we can reduce our attack vector and we make things simpler and easier to use and achieve some of our other goals that I just mentioned, right? So we want to reduce our image size. How do we do that? Well, there are different ways and I'm sure there are lots of other amazing presentations that go into the details and blog posts and tutorials and so on. So I'm just gonna provide a brief overview. We can use smaller base images. So when you're using a Docker file, when you're creating a Docker file in a container image, we usually use a base image based on which we built then the container image. 
Now, this base image can be a full-fledged operating system <laughs> or it could be just an Alpine image of a specific tool. So we want to use the smallest base image possible to still run our application. Next, we can use multi-stage builds. Now, if you're completely new to multi-stage builds, I highly suggest you to check it out. It's really amazing. It will transform the way you build container images. It basically allows you to separate the different stages based on which your container image is built into different aspects, different compact parts that feed into each other. So the first one feeds into the next one, into the next one, and that allows you to separate everything that's needed with a new container image from everything that's just a byproduct of the build process. Okay, so that's what we want to do. So we have this Docker file here. This Docker file is for a basic Node.js application, React application. So we first have our Node.js image as our base image. We just specify our working directory. We copy our dependencies. And then we want to run npm install to install of those dependencies, right? To have our Node modules. And then we can ultimately copy the source folders based on which our application is based on and then create an optimized build that can be run within our container image. So we copy everything that's created within this optimized build into our Nginx Alpine image and then we can run it. Amazing. So in this case, we have fairly small image size image base images, right? And then we have our multi-stage build. Okay, so we're doing good so far, right? I mean, I hope so at least. Well, let's look at the repository structure. This is the repository as I have it in Git, right? I just pushed it to Git like that. This is all I have. Here's some charts that are basically um, just for my Kubernetes deployments. Then I have here my HTML, my source, different React components. I have some Git files. What else do I have? I have my Docker file, some CICD pipeline. What else? My dependencies, my license. Things you normally see, right? I mean, I don't have to go into detail into every one of that, right? So, okay, I push it to Git and I tell a coworker, hey, why don't you try out the application? Make sure it works on your machine, right? <laughs> no. So I push it to Git, as you just saw. This is the file structure. I push it to Git and then coworker clones it and runs Docker built as it is just as it is right now. And it's fairly okay, right? It just takes like 124 seconds. And this is the transferred context size. Now we take a look at that in a second. It's okay, right? It doesn't have any node modules after, right after it's cloned from Git and it doesn't have a Docker ignore file at this point. Now, my coworker decides to run it locally and then decides to say, okay, they want to do npm install and through npm install our node modules are going to get installed and we have our additional folder called node modules. Now they go ahead, they update the application and they do another Docker build. And at this point they realize, oh, this is taking a lot longer than it used to before. Hmm. What's going wrong here? Why does it take so long to just build the same container image? Well, what's the problem with this? As we can see, now our transferred context size after our initial step is a lot bigger. What happened here, right? Let's take a look at the Docker file and the build context. What is actually the build context? So this is our file structure, or like as it is currently at my coworkers um, terminal ID. So this is the file structure that they have. And based on this, they create the Docker file, the container image that then they push to a remote registry and that should be then deployed to our different environments. So what is the build context? When they run Docker build and different options, such as Docker build and then the Docker hub ID and the image name and the tag, they specify additionally here this little dot. What is this dot? This dot specifies in which directory this command should be run. So in this case, we're specifying in the current directory we add, there's our Docker file and there's all our folders that we need to run our application and we need to build our container image. So we have our Docker file and that pulls all this information from the repository in the different steps and then sends them off to the Docker daemon and the Docker daemon is ultimately responsible 
for taking care of any requests through the Docker API and building our container image. So we push everything that we specify within our Docker file from the current directory, from the current repository off to the Docker daemon. Now, the build context, to summarize, specifies the directories containing our files. And it can get pretty difficult pretty quickly. So we have to be really careful with what we pass into the build context, what we specify actually within this dot. And this dot refers actually just the repository from which our different um, files should be copied from that we specify within our Docker file. So let's take a look here at it, right? We copy here our different dependencies, our package JSON, all good. And then we have here the step copy all into our build context and produce our container image, right? Send that all basically everything that's within the current directory off to the Docker daemon. Now, this is where things get a bit iffy, where you get a bad feeling in your stomach. You're like, okay, what am I actually copying here? What am I sending where? We don't like uncertainties. We want to know exactly what's happening, right? We're engineers, we want to know what's going on behind the scenes. Okay, so here's again that folder structure. Now, what's actually wrong here? Well, like mentioned at the beginning, I did not have, and you cannot see here, any Docker ignore file. It's not here. There is no Docker ignore for the previous builds. So when I tried it on my machine, I didn't have a node modules folder, right? I didn't have that. So it wasn't taken into the build context, but then when my coworker cloned this repository and then did a Docker build after they have installed all the dependencies and have this node modules, they didn't delete the node, don't node modules before they built their container image. So the entire node modules went into our build context. So everything in our node modules got transferred to the Docker daemon to build our container image. <gasps> What's happening here, right? All of these files are not needed. They're not needed to run our application. So, but they are still sent off. All of them are sent off to it because we didn't specify not to do it. We just specify, hey, take everything within our current directory, within our current build context, and just push it off to the Docker daemon. It's gonna be fine, right? <laughs> so here's where Docker Ignore comes in. What is actually Docker Ignore? Well, in short, Docker Ignore allows us how to tell Docker what to ignore, right? And it's really important. Do not ignore Docker Ignore. Let's pay attention to it. And if you're familiar with Git, you already know how to use Docker Ignore. It's basically, it's highly similar to Git Ignore. Just, yeah, pay attention to it. Docker Ignore is quite similar. It allows us to specify what files should not be included in our build context. So it makes our life a lot easier in the long term. You might not realize it right now. Right now, I'm just asking you to pay attention to a file called Docker Ignore. Pay attention what you put into that file, right? But in the long term, you have lots of benefits from it. Not only will you avoid such mistakes as that you push your application, your repository to Git, somebody else clones it and then executes Docker build. And at that point, they have a lot more dependencies that should not be included in that case in Docker build, but they're still going to be included in that build context. So these are kind of, these are errors or things that you can avoid for while having a Docker ignore file. So it becomes a lot less likely that you ultimately run into accidents, that you include files in your build context that should not be there. So pay attention to Docker Ignore. And this is ultimately my Docker Ignore. So I have here top, really important, are my node modules. I do not want to pass them in because ultimately I'm running npm install as part of my Docker file, as part of my Docker build anyways, right? So if in my Docker file, so I don't need to pass it in. It's likely always outdated whenever I pass it in. Kick it out, put it into Docker Ignore. Then we have here my build folder that might have my optimized build just to try it out locally, but based on which I don't need it, right? I don't need it within my container image because I'm ultimately creating that within the container image built as well, and then I'm passing it on to create an optimized build that I can run with Nginx. So 
Then I have here my docker ignore, my git ignore, I have more git files, everything related to git I do not need. I do not need to pass it along. I have my docker file. And then here, this is gonna get interesting. I have credentials and environment variables that I do not want to pass along. In the best case scenario, your Docker images, your container images are going to be agnostic across all of your environments. You do not want to make them dependent on environments because first of all, they get more difficult to manage. It gets more complex to update them and you are exposing yourself quite easily to vulnerabilities, to security flaws. So do your best and exclude anything that could make your container image build specific to environments. Of course, in some cases you want to have optimized Docker files, optimized builds, for each environment, but you do not want to pass along credentials or environment variables. Next, I have my charts folder that has everything related for my Kubernetes deployment. I don't need it here, right? It's not relevant. It only needs the final container image. It does not need to be part of the container image. And then I have my YAML file, like anything related to my to YAML, all of my CICD pipeline. I don't need that. So additionally, in some repositories, you might have documentation, you might have more dependencies included, or you have folders such as coverage that are a result of your tests. You do not want to include any of that. That shouldn't be part of your container image. It's just used to run your final application, right? So what is the build context here? Going back to it, when we say copy everything from our current directory where we run Docker built in into our build context to build our container image. And after we specify Docker ignore, we are only gonna pass along what we really need. So we are selecting what do we need and pass everything into Docker ignore. And that makes it much more easy, well, makes it easier <laughs> to figure out what is our container image actually dependent on, right? So ultimately pass everything into Docker ignore and then just filter out what do we need for a container image to build that. So once we have our Docker ignore, we run our Docker build command again. And in this case, we have our node modules. We have our Docker ignore, but within our Docker ignore file, our node modules are included. So it doesn't matter. So we pass it along as you can see, it takes a lot less time, well, a few seconds less than when we didn't have the node modules and the docker ignore file, but a lot less, one fourth, about one fourth of the time to when we had our node modules being included. And ultimately our container image size is a lot smaller. That's what we're aiming for. Make it compact, make it small. So let me leave you with 10 practical tips here. You first want to identify, like mentioned, all the files that are needed for your build context. Identify what is needed and pack everything else into your Docker ignore. Tip number two. Next, we want to use really small base images for our containers. Keep it compact right from the start. We want to use multi-stage builds. Awesome. Then we want to decouple our Docker file from our environment variables. Everything should be quite environment agnostic. We use as much as possible, right? Keep it small, keep it simple. And then you can ultimately use separate images for development and deployment if that needs to happen, right? In case of this simple React application, it does not, it's not really necessary. And then we can keep our images really simple, make them understandable for others. And ultimately we want to keep it transparent and understandable for the community, right? The easier I can understand your open source repositories with your Docker files, with everything that goes into your container images, the easier it will be for me to learn from that and to build upon that. And in the end, there's really no shame in copying the good parts. If you see something that's really great that somebody has done really great for their own uh, container image builds, copy it, right? Reach out to them, ask for, hey, how did you do that? Or can you give me a hand here? There's really no shame in copying. So I really hope we have some minutes for questions. Again, if you have any questions, if you want to stay in touch, here's my Twitter handle at Urlisanais. It was a pleasure to speak at DockerCon 2021. Thank you for listening.